All right, now I'm going to do a quick pruning demonstration to show some of the principles that we discussed in our lecture. Okay, at this point in the demonstration, I want to I want to subordinate this limb. Its size in comparison to the trunk is a little large. Its height from the measured from the base of the branch to the tip of the branch is greater than one third of the total tree. It's it's too big. So in subordinating it, <coughs> we are going to remove several pieces of it and still leave the branch intact, either so that it can stay there permanently, or over the course of a few years, we could continue to remove pieces of it until we make a final cut to remove the entire thing. So in subordinating this, first I'm going to take this piece of it right, right back to here because this other branch here fills this space really well. Removing this piece is going to send a clear message to the, to the rest of this big limb that uh, it needs to slow down, settle down. It's not the leader, it's just a limb. Cut that out. Notice that he did not use a three-part cut because he had full control of the limb. Okay, and then up here, if you, if you come and look closely right here, this is an example of included bark, where this branch union is not forming like a branch union should and will always remain a weakness as long as these two pieces are so close to the same size and, and such a tight, narrow crotch instead of a wide angle crotch like we like. So as part of this uh, subordination of the bigger limb, I'm going to make a reduction cut by removing this bigger piece right here. So I start my cut here. Now I've subordinated this limb. I've removed enough material here to send a message for this limb to slow down. Okay, right here I'm going to demonstrate removing a crossing limb. This little guy is crossing over the top of this big one. Now it's not always the case that you choose the little one to remove. Sometimes you would remove the bigger one. Uh, and sometimes it's not, I mean, these are both on the same parent stem where they're crossing each other. Other times you'll have a branch here and a branch here and they happen to be crossing way over here. So in this case, they're crossing over, we need to remove this piece right here. Make my cut. Done. On this other side of the tree, I want to show two examples of poor structure that we're going to fix. The first is right here at this level. You can see one, two, three, four, and this little fifth one right here that are all vertically spaced very poorly. Uh, they're crowding each other in the radial spacing right here, okay? They're all at the same level. Radially, they are crowding each other. The radial spacing is poor. So I'm gonna take out this one here and this one here. <coughs> Up here in the tree, <coughs> we have a vertical spacing problem where we have one, two, three, four limbs <coughs> stacked right on top of each other. <clears throat> if we were to leave either of these problems uh, for the next five, 10, 15 years, all of those branches in the trunk continue to size up and crowd each other more and more and more. So with these four limbs, I've decided I'm gonna take out this one here. That's closest to you. I'm gonna only take out this one half, this, this piece of the, the back, the branch here. I'm gonna take out this piece here. And then on the top, I've decided I'm going to take out this bigger one and leave this, this very top one behind. So in the end, we will keep this one and we will keep this one. My basic pruning on this tree. Uh, I started, I did a crown raising where we took off some lower limbs. Uh, overall, throughout the, the trimming, I did 
thinned the canopy and I cleaned the crown. But my main focus throughout the entire pruning was the structure of the tree. And you may notice, uh, as I have finished, it may look like I have left some holes in the canopy that, that look too open, too sparse. And that, that's kind of true, that's the way it is. But this tree is young enough that it has years to fill those gaps in. And as soon as these, this tree puts on leaves next spring, most of those gaps are not going to be that visible, and as, as it grows through, the, through that next growing season, it's going to fill those gaps in quickly. Uh, it's going to respond to the increased light and air penetration. It's going to fill in and balance itself out really well. Focusing on improving the structure of the tree is critical. When the trees are young and you're able to shape them into what's going to become a, a good, strong, healthy, long-lasting tree. Okay, we finished pruning. I stacked up the brush into these two piles just to give you a sense of how much I took versus the, the maximum that, that we might go for. I'm estimating that th these two piles represent about 15% of the living canopy of the tree. Maybe a little bit on the high side of 15%. 25% is our maximum. Not our target, our maximum. I stopped pruning right, right here. This is about 15%. There's still more work to do in this tree. I could have cut more, but I stopped thinking that this is enough for this year. The, the work that is left to do in this tree needs to be done next year or the year after. There's, there's, there's a lot that I've done today, but there's still more to do. demonstrate the three-part cut on this limb. This, this cut is used to help take the weight off of the branch before you make your final cut to avoid that falling branch from tearing the bark and creating a big ugly wound on your tree. This my, is... first, my first cut is underneath the branch a couple inches out from where my final cut, cut will be and I'm going to cut into the branch about a quarter of the way through, maybe a third of the way through. I've cut under just a little bit. My, my second cut is outside of that, past that on the branch, and I'm going to cut all the way through and let the, let the weight drop off. Now that I've gotten that far, I've just got the stub, I've just got the stub left to cut. I'm going to make that final cut outside of the branch bark ridge, outside of the branch collar, and as much as possible, my cut is going to be perpendicular to the piece that I'm cutting. I would also add that the uh, three-part cut is for use anytime a limb is over about an inch and you cannot get complete control on it with your other hand. One thing to know too is if you are using that other hand to steady the limb, you do need to be careful not to have the saw go through the limb and uh, into your supporting arm. That's, uh, that's a little tip that comes from experience. Anyways, thanks again for watching and uh, we'll see you later.